Hello, welcome to There Will Always Be Another Book. Today I have a bit of a double feature. I'm talking about the, uh, to be honest, only two books I've read by Stanislaw Lem, uh, Solaris and The Siberiad, in, read it in that order. Uh, both of these are really great books and I would say that they're solid four star books, um, but maybe, maybe could be up to five stars. I, th I know I definitely want to reread uh, Solaris um, and I just finished The Siberiad um, maybe a week or two ago so uh that's why i'm uh, and i really enjoyed it but maybe i'll come back to it eventually um the reason i wanted to make a video one video talking about two of lem's works is that uh, i really wanted to highlight and talk about his versatility as a writer and how these two books really seem to take such uh he has such a different style uh in both of them where solaris was it is an incredibly hard uh, science fiction book. Um, I kind of make a joke when I uh, explain the book to people that a lot of the time um, the book is... What happens is in the book is that the main character, Kelvin, just goes to a library and reads books. Um, and so in terms of information dumps, uh, they really are plenty in here. Um, on the other hand, the Siberiad is a bunch of fables by these two uh, constructors, these robots, Trural and Klapausius. And this book is just so funny. Um, the interaction between the, the two is uh, such a great uh, organic, funnily enough, dynamic, um, and just completely different. But in both uh, in both of these books, um, Lem's uh, scientific knowledge and his erudition and his ability to kind of um, convey big ideas, maybe convey uh, or just at least to introduce big ideas uh, to a reader um, is really second to none. But I'll talk about Solaris first because um, I think maybe most people, this is probably his most popular book. Um, probably. Uh, there is the great Tarkovsky film that was made about this, which is a bit different, um, as all Tarkovsky films tend to be from their source material. Uh, but um, I pretty much got onto this book. I was going through a binge of just watching all of Tarkovsky's films, and before reading, before watching Solaris, I wanted to read it. I heard about Solaris because I read Blind Sight and on some Reddit thread or something, uh, somebody said like, hey, you know, um, this whole uh, completely unable to understand uh, alien intelligence and uh, um, the inability to make contact that uh, Peter Watts did so well in that book, um, you should really check out Blind Sight because that's, uh, you should really check out Solaris if you liked Blind Sight um, because it's a uh, another great example. So I picked this up and then um, just uh, read this before watching the movie and more or less to give a, I uh, don't want to talk too long about plot as always because who's watching these videos without having read the books, but anyway. Um, the plot of Solaris is that these people on Earth find out about a planet, the Solaris. Um, uh, it's like a mysterious uh, planet and his mission is just to go to where the orbiting station is and find out what's happening. He gets there and there's some weird shit going on. There's like no one there. There's some really creepy um, stuff going on, like apparitions of dead people are appearing to all of the crew members. Um, uh, Kelvin is confronted by a uh, his wife who killed herself. And it's... And it's it's a very interesting story. It's it's got such a um, it's got such a specific mood. And of anything else, uh, of any criticism that I have with the book, whether you know, like um, the plot doesn't sort of land, or that there is um, a whole lot of information dumps, um, this book has such a vibe that I really. Uh, Maybe, maybe except for Blindside, I haven't, I mean, I'm not a giant sci-fi reader uh, anyway, but I really haven't gotten a vibe of this sort of, um, uh, a vibe like this from any other books. And I would really love to know any, uh, any recommendations that you have for books that scratch a similar itch for you. Um, but Solaris, yeah, like I said, it's a very, um, heavy, uh, it's a very heavy book and... Uh, still quite enjoyable to read. I really loved some of the interactions and I thought that um, Tarkovsky actually did a really good job even though he tends to be more... Um, he'll tend to adapt into a more stronger focus on spirituality and God, um, which, you know, works really well in films 
like Andrei Rublev and uh, Stalker. Um, yeah, very heavy science fiction book, highly recommended. I uh, implore you to check out Solaris. And if you can, grab the Siberiad afterwards, because um, this book like I said, it's just completely different. And all of the fables, uh, all of the stories, there's sort of a whole bunch of what they're called the, the first Sally, the second Sally. Um, and there are, I, I really think that the Siberiad has a contender for being one of my favorite, um, opening lines to a book in terms of, you know, we've got all of the classic opening lines, mother died yesterday, a screaming comes across the sky, blah, blah, blah. Um, here's one, uh, that I think is a great contender to just exactly, boom, uh, pinpoint what the vibe of the book is going to be and to draw you in. One day, Troll the Constructor put together a machine that could create anything starting with N. That's it. And I'll read the second sentence uh, just to... Um, uh, or I'll read the first paragraph just to continue. When it was ready, he tried it out, ordering it to make needles, then nankeens and negligees, which it did, then nailed a lot of nargiles filled with nepenthe and numerous other narcotics. This, The machine carried out his instructions to the letter. Still not completely sure of its ability, he had it produce, one after another, nimbuses, noodles, nuclei, neutrons, na naphtha, naphtha, noses, nymphs, naiads, and natrium. This last it could not do, and Truel, considerably irritated, demanded an explanation. Never heard of it, said the machine. What? But it's only sodium. You know, the metal, the element. Sodium starts with an S, and I only work in N. But in Latin, it's natrium. Or natrium, I don't know. Uh, correct my pronunciation, please. Look, old boy, said the machine. If, if I could do everything starting with N in every possible language, I'd be a machine that could do everything in the whole alphabet, since any item you care to mention undoubtedly starts with N in one foreign language or another. It's not that easy. I can't go beyond what you programmed, so no sodium. Just so funny. And I, like, that whole story ends up just being great. It's only, like, ten pages long. Um, and... Uh, that's just if if there was to set a vibe for what the whole book is going to be like there that's it and so that's why i think it's a good contender there is um transferring consciousness between machines there is um uh stories of dragons that it exist in indeterminate states so like they will just randomly pop up uh, out of nowhere for some physics reason that was way over my head to get but um uh like i get the story but I don't get the actual physics behind it. Um, I don't know if it's got something to do with Maxwell's demon. Maybe that's a different thing. Um, there's a story about a femme fatalatron, which is a machine that uh, is just like overloads and stimulates a, uh, a man with kind of, I guess, physical, emotional, sexual um, stimuli uh and he tries to do it in in an attempt to convince this prince to fall out of love with this princess um which doesn't work and it's just like no i'm sorry he just loves him and i love that idea of you know back in the really 65 uh first published um uh coming up with sort of these like pleasure machines that uh, would become such a staple of cyberpunk and and things like that um and yeah, machines that uh, kind of invent an entire reality and galaxy in their world, and this machine that's kind of, um, uh, you know, a de facto solipsist because it can't perceive anything that's outside of itself. Uh, and I mentioned in my video on Liu when I was talking about the remembrance of Earth's past, um, that at that time I was reading uh, the Siberiad, now I've finished it, and um, while I still stand that I mean, Liu's fable isn't funny like uh, Lem, but it has that sense of magic and mystique and, and uh, fable. And so I strongly recommend you give both of these books a chance, Solaris and the Siberiad. Honestly, it's kind of like what I recommended in my Panin video where um, reading Lolita and then Panin gives you a kind of broad understanding or perspective, a more broad understanding perspective of Nabokov's style, where if you only read Lolita, you wouldn't know that really not as many of his books are, are like that. Um, maybe Pale Fire is the closest with the sort of twisted warpness um, of uh, Charles Kimbo. Um, but yeah, uh, a different style. And reading more of an author, I guess, gives you a more broad perspective. I have on 
my wish list. I haven't bought them yet. I do want to get some more of Lem. I'm thinking of the Futurological Diaries. Is that? Oh no, it's the Star Diaries and the Futurological something. Um, uh, they they were just the ones that were that were kind of recommended via the recommendation section in in uh, insert miscellaneous book buying website. But I want to know. I really want to read some more of Lem in each style, so please give me some recommendations of what is more Solaris, Solarisy, uh, and what is more Siberiad, Siberiadian. Um, <laughs> those are so like the worst suffixes I could have chosen uh, for the book. But um, I hope you enjoyed my appraisal of both of those books. Um, maybe they could have been five star books. I don't know. I feel like I've been doling out five stars, uh, you know, a bit too, a bit too flippantly, but. I don't know. I don't know. I've just I've just also read a lot of bangers recently. Um, please give me some recommendations for uh, more books by Lem, and uh, especially more books that have a Solarisian vibe. Um, yeah, sorry. I'm just thinking about like other possible suffixes. Like obviously, there's the Solarists, Solarises, Solarises. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, remember to keep on reading. I hope you. Uh, uh, enjoyed this video. There will always be another book and I'll see you in the next video.